today making a big comeback after a pretty poor performance yesterday. NAB uh, winning, I guess, the race out of the big four up by 2.7%. Uh, what do you put that down to, the banks in particular, I'm asking? Nadine, I think we saw a strong performance in the banks today uh, off the back of potentially that RBA rate decision yesterday. Of course, we saw they, they are expecting to keep rates uh, on hold at these low levels for quite some time. So I think today we probably saw investors jumping back into a lot of those high-yielding stocks of, of no, uh, mostly those, those major banks. So I potentially think that was a reason. But of course, we have been uh, seeing these banks uh, yesterday and of course last week they were the worst performers, uh, dro dropping back off some of their recent highs so I do think that investors have been jumping back uh, into some of those banks uh, probably as a result to get back into some of those uh, high yielding stocks but as you said they, they were certainly a strong performer on the market today. What else were you watching today Leanne with interest obviously that trade data but um, where else in the market? The trade data certainly, but, but overall we did have a very strong performance. We did close up around 1.5% in the end. Uh, start At the start of the session today we were in fact down about 1.3%, so we have in fact recovered all of the, the earlier week uh, losses. Uh, we, it did seem like the market uh, shrugged off that trade balance and we did continue to see strength in that materials sector. That was uh, up around 1.8% at the close. Of course, as Michael mentioned, we saw that stronger iron ore price coming through overnight and, and we did see a strength across uh, a lot of those materials stocks but of course that staples area that was the best performer on our market today it did close up about two and a half percent and really that was being dragged higher by both West Farmers uh, and Woolworths and uh, dragged lower by, by Goodman Fielder as well but we saw really strong performance uh, in Woolworths and West Farmers which really dragged up that that staples sector so overall it was a, a very positive and strong day on the market. Yeah and on Goodman Fielder it was one of the day's worst performers um, look, it doesn't look like they're going to get an improved offer from an outside party. It looks like this Wilmar First Pacific bid will be the one. Um, obviously, they've done their due diligence. They believe that the lower takeover bid is justified. I mean, poor Goodman Fielder shareholders. What will they do between now and November when the final vote is? It certainly was disappointing. I mean, we did see the stock falling off around 3.7% in the end to about 65.5 cents, which is, in fact, lower than that bid that's come through at 67.5 cents. So I do think we saw a lot of that negative performance today. Certainly investors are very disappointing with the fact that they have come through with this lower bid. Of course, we saw them sweeten that offer previously to 70 cents, but they now have reduced that by about another 2.5 cents. So certainly was disappointing news today. But I do th think that uh, this lower uh, takeover bid that has come through probably is justified. We do know that uh, Good Goodman Fielder has been undergoing significant significant problems within the business. They have been looking at cost cutting, uh, restructuring and divesting over the last three years or so in an attempt to sort of focus on their core brands and reduce their debt. And of course we also know they have been facing uh, some significant challenges uh, within that, that food manufacturing division as well. And we also estimate they probably need to uh, invest in some uh, capital expenditure in the years ahead. So as a result of all of these reasons, I think that lower takeover bid is probably justified, but certainly disappointing uh, for investors today. It comes to this session this evening, what will you, will you be looking for in particular? Nadine, we are expecting to see um, some strength in that em uh, employment report. We're expecting to see the, uh, some, the fifth month of uh, jobs growth above that 200,000 level, which hopefully should add to the confidence around uh, the growth of that uh, US economy. So we are, in, in fact, expecting uh, June employment growth of about 210,000 jobs uh, versus consensus of about 205,000. So uh, we certainly are hoping that this might provide another boost to, to sentiment and confidence around the US. Of course, we have been seeing a lot of positive uh, economic data coming from the US in terms of uh, their jobless claims recently, that consumer confidence which reached uh, that highest level since January 2008, and of course that strong housing data that did come through last week as well. So certainly is keeping Wall Street up at record highs at the moment, and, and of course that volatility really low. So we are expecting uh, to see strength in that employment number again, uh, which potentially could push uh, Wall Street even further. Okay. Um